In the last lecture, we saw how to find out if the given LTI system is stable or unstable when the impulse response of the system is given. Now in this presentation, we will do the same thing. But this time, instead of impulse response, the transfer function of the system will be given. So we will directly move to our fifth problem. We have completed one to four problems in the last lecture and you are expected to know the points explained in the last lecture. We saw how to find out the stability of the LTI system when the impulse response of the LTI system is given. There is one condition according to which the impulse response of the LTI system should be absolutely integrable. But there is no need to perform the integration because we know energy signals are also absolutely integrable signals. So whenever the impulse response is an energy signal which implies the impulse response is absolutely integrable, we can say that the LTI system is stable in nature. So this is one important point and we know how to check the stability using this process. Now in this presentation, instead of impulse response, the transfer function of the LTI system will be given. So let's take our first problem in this lecture. In this, the transfer function is equal to 1 over S. Now there are two methods to solve the problem. The first method you already know. You can perform the inverse Laplace transform and have the impulse response. And once you have the impulse response, you can repeat this process. The impulse response HT will be equal to UT because inverse Laplace transform of 1 over S is equal to UT, the unit step signal. Now if we plot the waveform of unit step signal, it will look like this. We already know how the waveform of unit step signal looks from minus infinity to zero. The value of signal HT will be zero. From zero to infinity, the value of signal will be one. Now, according to the condition of stability, the impulse response should be absolutely integrable. This means if we integrate HT from minus infinity to infinity, we should have something which is finite. It should not be equal to infinity. But you can see when you integrate HT from minus infinity to infinity, you will not get something finite. You will get infinity. I will explain you how. From minus infinity to zero, the area is equal to zero. The integration will give you the area and from minus infinity to zero, I will call the area as A subscript minus infinity to zero plus we will have the another area from zero to infinity. I will call it A subscript zero to infinity. Now you can see HT is equal to zero from minus infinity to zero. Therefore, the first area is equal to zero. The second area is not equal to zero. It is equal to one, which is the height multiplied to infinity, which is the width from zero to infinity. We have the width equal to infinity. So we will have one multiplied to infinity. So finally, we are going to get infinity as the area and area is nothing but integration minus infinity to infinity mod ht dt. So we have the area or the integration which is not finite. Therefore, this condition is violated and hence the given LTI system is unstable. The given LTI system is unstable. So in this way, you can check the stability of the system. And you also know that ut is a power signal. It is a power signal. It is not an energy signal because it is an infinite extension signal in which the amplitude is not decreasing. For infinite extension signals, the amplitude should decrease for an energy signal. We have already seen this condition in the last lecture. So here we have the infinite extension signal, but the amplitude is constant from zero to infinity and from minus infinity to zero, it is equal to zero. So it is not decreasing. Therefore, it is power signal. It is not an energy signal and hence it is not absolutely integrable. Therefore, the system is unstable. So there are different approaches to find out the solution. Now I will explain the method number two. 
In method number two, we will first find out the pole from the transfer function. The transfer function is equal to one over s and we can easily calculate the pole. The pole in this case is equal to zero. There is only one pole and it is equal to zero. And I believe you know about the zeros and poles. And once we have the pole, we can easily plot it on our s plane. So this is our s plane in which the x axis is for sigma and the y axis is for j omega. This is the imaginary axis and this is the real axis and this is our origin. And here you can see the pole is existing at zero. This means this is the location of the pole. I will change the color to represent the pole. This is the representation for the pole. We use cross as the representation and for zeros we use this representation. So here we have the pole on the imaginary axis. This axis here is the imaginary axis. And whenever you have the pole on the imaginary axis, it is the case of marginally stable system. So our system is marginally stable. And if you see the two results, you will find there is contradiction. So here we have the contradiction from the result we have obtained following the first method. The system is unstable. And from the pole zero plot, we have the marginally stable system. So there is contradiction. And for this, we will use the bounded input, bounded output criteria. According to Bebo criteria, all marginally stable systems are considered as unstable system. So this is the final answer. Whenever you have the marginally stable system, according to Bebo criteria, the system is unstable. So you are having this method also. You can follow it to solve the question in a very quick manner. Now we will move to our sixth problem. This is the last problem in this lecture. And in this problem, the transfer function is equal to one over s square plus one. We will follow this method. We will first find out the poles. For this, we will equate the denominator s square plus one with zero. From here, we will have plus minus j. So let's make our s plane. This is j omega axis and this is sigma axis. S is equal to plus j and minus j. Let's say our first pole is located here plus j and the second pole is located here minus j. So in this case also the poles are located on the imaginary axis. Therefore, the system is marginally stable and according to Bebo criteria, we have the unstable system. So the answer is unstable and you can definitely follow the another method in which you can obtain the impulse response using the inverse Laplace transform. So we will take the inverse Laplace transform and we will have the impulse response ht equal to sine t multiplied to ut. The inverse Laplace transform of one over s square plus one is equal to sine t ut. And in the last lecture, we saw sine t is a power signal. It is not an energy signal and you are multiplying sine t with ut. ut will make ht equal to zero from minus infinity to zero and then ht will be equal to sine t from zero to infinity. So again you will have the total energy equal to infinity and the average power is finite. Therefore the impulse response is not an energy signal and this implies it is not absolutely integrable and as ht is not absolutely integrable the given system is unstable so i think you now understand how to check the stability of the given lti system 
If you have any doubt, you may ask in the comment section. I will end this lecture here. See you in the next one.